Welcome back to Creative Therapy Umbrella. This is a place where we talk about all different types of creative arts therapies, expressive therapies, and creative approaches to therapy. My name is Kate Shannon. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor and a board certified music therapist, and I'm your host. Today is number two in our creative self-care challenge. Uh, Today we'll be talking a little bit about space. If you haven't checked out last week's episode, it was all about acceptance, which is the major foundation for creativity. Whether we're utilizing creativity for self-care or if we are working on supporting the creative resilience of the clients that we work with, acceptance um, and, and lack of judgment, yes anding, those are huge, huge parts of of acceptance. So uh, go check out last week's episode if you haven't. If you've already listened, awesome. Let's dive in to our next theme, space. So the great thing about space is, uh, and when I talk about space, it's not like outer space and not necessarily the space around you. Um, Hint, hint, that'll actually be next week's topic is the environment. But space as in silence. Uh, Space as in room for growth. Um, Space as in like negative space. Sometimes I always like to think of it in a design term, the negative space that's there. Uh, When we stop sometimes to think about um, how much we are doing and we leave space to just be, that's really, really powerful and important in our sessions. Um, I know as a music therapist, sometimes it's so easy to get caught up in what am I doing next or what intervention are we bringing next and forgetting to just be present and slow down and just be in the session. Um, There is endless opportunity in a place of silence and space, which I think is something that's fascinating. Uh, When we're holding silence and space within a session, we're leaving room for growth. We're leaving room for opportunity that we may never We may never know what might come out of a child's mouth if we leave that silence for an extra couple of seconds. And we may never know if we uh, what a teen might do next in a creative uh, dance expression if we don't leave the space there for them to do that. Uh, So holding that space is so important for us to do for ourselves and for our clients. So the challenge that I'm going to talk about today is, again, these challenges are for us to do for ourselves, um, and then they are directly applicable to bringing them into sessions as well. Uh, With acceptance, I think that's a big one, a big mindset to bring into session, as well as the concept of acceptance into the session as well for, um, for children and teens to understand, you know, that we can, when we accept things, there's less fighting, there's less, like, anxiety anxiety if we work on accepting our feelings and feeling our feelings and knowing that we'll be okay and then moving through them versus kind of like getting stuck with them and and trying to change them and um so I wanted to uh talk a little bit about um, silence. And this actually, this inspiration comes from a book called The Art of Noticing. Uh, It's fantastic. It's 131 ways to spark creativity, find inspiration, and discover joy in the everyday. Um, So it's just an unbelievable book. I got it from the library and it is now in my Amazon cart because I want it forever. Um, But one of the chapters that I think is really fascinating talks about uh, channeling your inner monk. Um, and how silence is so, so powerful, even just in its listening, taking time to not speak. Um, how the cultivation of silence is indispensable in being a human, how powerful silence is for being human, especially now when we think of how much we're inundated by media and sounds and our phones going off and all of these different interrupters that are constantly throughout our day. Um, so the challenge with this is, uh, spending an entire day, uh, saying only what you must say. And I'm sure some of you have probably heard this one before, because I know I had heard it and I was like, oh man, I haven't ever done it though. Um, so this one's going to be a new one for me to try too. And I'm really excited to try it. Um, so again, saying only what you must say. And I think, you know, maybe take two different days on trying this. The first day we're doing this for ourselves. We're saying only what we must say 
and that time of silence and the time that we're spending not talking and we're, we're in silence, we can be reflecting on what's happening inside us. What's going on for me today? What am I feeling? Where am I feeling it in my body? Um, what did that just bring up for me when I heard that person say that? Wow, silence is hard. <laughs> you know, going on, doing all of those different things and, and taking that time to reflect inwards. Um, and then I think on a second day, what we could do is then use that in a session, in a day full of sessions, um, and and really practice that I'm only going to say what I must say. And I love the word must because it really, for me, it's like, ooh, you know, like it really makes you think about and slow down and value the silence and space that is there um, and leave so much opportunity for what could happen in that space. Um, sometimes we miss what other people are saying. We're missing what, you know, other uh, body language, what people are not saying and what they're actually telling us through their body or through different actions. Um, it's fascinating to think about how much we could miss in a day, um, especially when this comes to sessions. But I also think about how much are we missing within ourselves when we are not allowing ourselves to be in silence. So this challenge, again, twofold or two different days. The first day is leaving space and silence for yourself, saying only what you must say, and maybe even adding to that, like, consuming only what you must consume for media. Uh, sometimes for me, I, I'm a big, uh, like, I'm going to throw on a podcast and go for a walk or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put on Friends or 30 Rock while I wash the dishes. Um, and I'm going to challenge myself to not do that in for a day, you know, not forever. Oh, my gosh, where would I be? Uh, but, you know, just for a day to experience that silence and take that time for myself and just slow down and spend that time listening and, and tuning inwards. Um, so that's our first one is doing that silence and space for ourselves for a day, saying only what we must say for a day and then doing that within session, spending a day in session, saying only what we must say and maybe doing only what we must do, um, you know, really reevaluating what we're doing and saying in sessions. So uh, that is our second challenge for the creativity self-care challenge for ourselves, for our clients. I am sending you loads and loads of warm thoughts. Um, thank you so, so much for being a listener. I would love to hear how this challenge is going for you. You can feel free to email me, kate at creativetherapyumbrella.com. You can follow us on Instagram and hashtag how this is going for you. Hashtag CTU uh, creativity. Oh, I just forgot it. Hashtag CTU creativity challenge. There it is. Um, you can find all of this information in the show notes. You can find us on Instagram, all of our good stuff there. So sending you lots of warm thoughts during a tough time. I know there's a lot going on in the world. There is uh, a lot going on for everybody personally, I think, as well during this transitional time of year before school. Um, so I'm sending you so, so many warm thoughts, holding you in my mind, and uh, always feel free to reach out and, of course, be creative. <laughs>